Welcome to The Survivalists. This is a brand new action survival sort of game by Team 17. They are the guys behind the Worm series. I was lucky enough to get a key off a website I use where I can talk to people that deal with keys and stuff from developers. So a massive thank you to Keymailer. I also have an affiliate link for this game. So if you check out the top link in the description, it will take you over to the Green Man Gaming website. If you use the link in the description, you can save yourself 12% on the game. So it should be like £19.35 instead of £22. And by using that link, you are supporting the channel as well, as I get a little bit of commission off each of the sales. So I would greatly appreciate if you want to check the game out, then use that link. So this is a beginner's guide to this game. And there's a lot of exploration involved. There's vaults, there's monkeys you can train. I didn't get too far into the game. I played for about an hour and a half. But the first tip I can give you is make sure you go exploring. You'll pretty much start... I don't know if everyone starts in the same area. But you'll pretty much start next to this like abandoned, broken down raft. And you pretty much can't go anywhere. You have to kind of wander off into the sea a little bit. And then you have to go around this island. You'll find enemies. You'll find camps. You'll find these ruins. There's a lot of different stuff to find. And it's a survival game, so you need to keep an eye on your hunger and stuff as well. You can play this game in single player, you can also play online. There will be online games, and things like the mysterious chest, which we will get into in a little bit, they can be carried over from your single player game into your online game. So as soon as you spawn in, I would recommend pressing C. You can check your craft menu, and once you start crafting things, you'll see the lines that come off and branch off into other items. Once you craft something, each of the lines that come off that item will unlock. So basically crafting your very first item will unlock more things that you can craft. It will eventually help you out a lot because there are different food types and stuff you can craft at campfires and eventually inside the vaults you might find, I think it's a labyrinth gem you need and also like a broken down ice sword or there's different like elements. You can get like fire swords and stuff. And if you find a broken weapon and the labyrinth gem, you can craft them into a brand new weapon. But make sure you are using your crafting menu. Check every single vault you find. They will be tough at first when you don't have any weapons or anything, but you can craft an axe. But you go into the vault, you do a little bit of exploration. And then when you get into the main room, you will have a few enemies to fight. There will be a few chests there for you to loot. And there will also be a monkey trapped in a cage. If you destroy the cage and free the monkey that monkey will follow you around. You basically start building up an army of monkeys. You can rename them, you can change the color of them. There's a couple of cool customization options for the monkeys. You can also do all of that stuff a little bit more with your character. You can change like your pants and top and stuff. As soon as you find your first monkey, make sure you hand them an item. If you want them to start crafting, you can hand them a multi-tool. If you want them to help you out in combat, you can pass them a weapon. I pretty much had all of my monkeys always wielding swords because they could help me out in the combat. I did die a few times within the first hour and a half of me playing. What you have to do is open up the monkey training thing, you hold Q, you hover over and click on one of the monkeys, you select teach in their little menu, and then you show them the actions you want them to perform. As I said, if you are teaching your monkeys combat, don't forget to give them a weapon, otherwise they are going to be useless. Next up, and I find this incredibly important because you don't get any backpack or anything like that. The only things you can hold is stuff that will fit in your hotbar at the bottom of the screen. So once you have located the mysterious hot air balloon, it acts like a secret shop. When you open that menu, you will find a, like a request. I think it's three rope you hand in you'll be awarded a spyglass. Once you have completed that request, you will unlock things to purchase. Make sure you buy the mysterious chest. It will drop a chest next to the hot air balloon. You can pick it up, you can take it back to wherever your like, base is located, wherever you've decided is a safe spot. You can use that to store things in it. It gives you a lot more freedom so that your hot bar's empty, you can pick up a lot more stuff. And as I said towards the beginning of the video, I think you can use the stuff in a co-op game and in your single player game as well. I think the chest transfers over from single player to co-op. Another thing to note with chests, you can also get your monkey. Like if you pick it up and then pass the chest to your monkey, they can carry them around. So you're going to have portable chests. As I mentioned, you get a spyglass. I didn't actually get a chance to use it, but apparently you do use it to scout other islands because you basically spawn on a little island. There's a lot of sea around you. 
But if you use the spyglass, you can like venture off and you can find other islands that might contain better loot. There might be some more safer ones. There might be more enemy-filled islands and stuff. I don't know too much about the game at the moment, and that's why this is a beginner's guide. You will find several different like wildlife and creatures on the islands. I found bats. I'm going to call them rams. They're very aggressive-looking animals that will charge you. But those and other wildlife or creatures you might find can drop meat. If you use one timber to find a campfire, you can light the campfire. And as long as you have a multi-tool, you can cook meat. It will turn the random meat into meat kebabs and they help out with your hunger. They regen your health. They are incredibly helpful. Make sure as soon as you can, you craft a bed. You'll also need a blanket to go with it. That will be the thing that unlocks once you've crafted the bed. As the bed will allow you to save the game, you can also sleep. There's actually three options. You've got save, sleep, or save and sleep. And if you're sleeping, if it's nighttime, it's going to fast forward to daytime so you can see better. I don't think the world's going to be full of as many baddies. And then if you look at the top right corner of the screen, you'll see your mini map. You can actually see where the sun is located. It will also show you the moon. And then I'm going to call it the red moon. I don't know what it actually is. But as soon as I saw that red moon on that mini map, the next day, as soon as nighttime ended, the world, like, it popped up with a notification to tell me that the world has replenished everything. So once the world is replenished, you can loot chests in vaults again. And all of the bad guys that you've killed will have respawned. So you can go back and you can kill all of those again. You can gather gold off them or coins or doubloons as the game calls them. You can gather those, you can get different weapons, like I've had bows and arrows drop off some of the enemies. But I think almost everything will replenish besides the monkeys that are in cages inside the vaults. Make sure you are doing your exploring and search every single location you possibly can, because you never know what you will find. There's lots of ruins, you will find some remains that you can loot and they might have potted flowers in them. They could have these like notes and they're worth money, like basically just some little things that you can sell off to get some more money. And that is pretty much as far as I got within the hour and a half I did. I think I explored almost all of the first island that I spawned on. I don't know how much different it's going to be for other people, whether it's procedurally generated, whether it's exactly the same, I'm not entirely sure. But if you guys do enjoy this, I will make sure I come back, play some more, we'll find out some more stuff, we'll try and find other islands and things. And I mean, I will probably more than likely be streaming it instead of just doing recordings and stuff. But then if there's anything to highlight like these tips, then I will make sure I do videos as well. But that's going to do it for this one. Let me know all of your thoughts and stuff in the comments. Remember, if you want to pick up the game and support the channel, there is a link in the description. I will see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.